Hey friends, it's Kip Icon, and welcome to Kip Plays the Entertainment. The Entertainment is a is an interlude between Kentucky Route Zero Acts two and three, and it's actually a play. So this is the website that you go to to download the Entertainment. We have a lovely little collage here of bread and bricks and a skull. Lem Doolittle, the Entertainment. The Entertainment was first presented at the Buffalo Street Student Theater on the evening of November 16th, 1973, with the following cast. So this is before the events of Kentucky Route Zero, it would seem. Harry Esperanza is Edgar Foy. Lawrence Slade was Alan Vogel. Pearl Slade was Sarah Wakefield. Rosa Slade was Sidney Mueller. Evelyn Hickman was Paula Graves, and The Barfly was uncredited. The production was directed by James B. Carrington, who we should recognize that name, certainly, from Act 1 of Kentucky Route Zero. The setting was designed by Lula Chamberlain. We should rec recognize that name from the second act. The plays A Reckoning and A Barfly were written by Lem Doolittle, we don't know that name yet, and later adapted by Joseph Wheatree, we certainly know that name, I believe that that is... Uh, uh, the old man who's at Equus Oils, for simultaneous performance as The Entertainment. So I've downloaded the Mac version. There's actually a script that you can buy, a paper and ink version of the actual script, and you can also play it in VR, which I don't really have the capabilities to do. Um, but we're going to go ahead and um, we're just going to go through the entirety of the entertainment together. So I hope that you friends will sit back and enjoy and without further ado, here we go. The Entertainment Hard Time Served mm. Love when lights go up on a play. We're actually sitting at a table here and there's a real audience watching us. Oh, what does that say? Student production is audacious. We have the right to lie, said dramatist Antony Nartod, but not about the heart of the matter. A obscure playwright Lem Doolittle seems to have made a project of this distinction in his play, A Reckoning. Originally written shortly before his mysterious disappearance several decades ago, and published posthumously, the play is a favorite among companies wishing to show their knowledge of local cultural history. How unexpected, then, to encounter a production that, threats, that treats the script so irreverently. This student company has gone so far as to change the title of the play and even add a new character, a silent, uncredited actor who pantomimes drunkenness with all the grace of a dog trying to escape from under a duvet. Still, this staging of the entertainment stays true to the heart of Doolittle's work. Perhaps that's all these students owe him. Lily Thurston, Adair County News. So we're here at this table. Barfly sits at a table with two glasses, one empty. Barfly examines empty glass, examines full glass, looks at ashtray, blows gently with pursed lips, observes ash configuration, coughs, wipes nose with sleeve, at length inspects sleeve. Barfly remembers something trivial about the prior evening, looks up suddenly, looks left, right, skims newspaper, article about cross-country travel by hot air balloon, visualizes hot air balloon launch, forgets. This is a brick between two pieces of bread. Harry, to GD hot, Evelyn. It's cool in here. Yep. Like Babylon outside. GD, you're right. Well, cool in here. It's an oasis. I wonder how Ted's holding up. AC. Down there, they all have it. Sure, you're right. I've never been to Texas. Oh, sure. They all have AC. Too cold, almost. In July, even. He's got a hotel. Yeah, hotel life. That's living. Maybe too much. I mean, 
What's to stop him, really? Meet some tall thing at the hotel bar? Nah. Ted's a good man. Nah, I know. He wouldn't run around. You're right. How about a beer? No beer today. Hard times whiskey. That all you got? It's a good whiskey. Local. Yeah? You take deliveries from them? Sure. You ever see one of them? The boys from hard times? What? I heard they're strange. They work hard. They make a good whiskey. Who are we to judge? Sure. Who are we? No one of consequence. What's all this bread for? Sandwiches. Rain's Law. So, really quickly, Rain's Law is a law that says you can serve alcohol in a bar. There's, there's some stipulation, maybe during Prohibition or something, where, well, it would have to have been after Prohibition, but um, after Prohibition was over with, but uh, you could serve alcohol. There was some sort of stipulation where you could serve alcohol as long as there was food being served. And to mock that, <laughs> they just put bricks between loaves of bread. Ha. The old ones went bad while you were on vacation? You have a good time while the sandwiches rotted? Oh, you know me. Couldn't shut it off. Seven days on a beach and all I could think about was work. You know, the new kitchen. Maybe hire a hostess, you know. A hostess? At the lower depths? Ha! <laughs> Crazy. No. It's not so crazy. I was in a bar down there in uh, New Orleans. They had a hostess, some dive. She seats you and, uh, I don't know, points out the specials. Could have specials every night in here. Drink specials? You make cocktails? No. Nah. Food specials. Monday night chicken, uh, I don't know, Grilled chicken. Caesar salad? Class it up, you know. Bess would have liked it. Here's to Bess. Yeah. Yeah, let me grab a... Here's to Bess. Good Christian woman. Good Christian woman. How about that sot in the corner? Hey, are you talking about me? Not bothering nobody. Been here long? soon as I opened. Got started a bit earlier, I suspect. On a bender, huh? Sleeping in a ditch or something? You don't think maybe Ted? No. Ted's a good man. Honest. Well-liked. He's liked, but he's well-liked. Sales is a good fit. Selling hammers. Can you believe it? Somebody has to. The hammers. They don't sell themselves. Hear, hear. It's just hard. Ted on the road. It's tough all over. What to do all day? Come here, I guess. Sure. That's what I do. Cheap drinks. Conversation. And the entertainment. Sure. What's tonight? Oh, tonight it's... Oh, Junebug. I'll stay for that. I need some music. Get my mind off, Ted. Something romantic, you know? A love song from when the world was young. What time? Around eight, maybe. Well, set him up slow, or I'll sleep right through it. Wakefield stuns in the entertainment, or in entertainment. The premiere at Buffalo Street Student Theater was a curiosity. Two obscure plays by a local author were simultaneously presented, 
for the pleasure of a handful of baffled patrons. The result? An absorbing, if unfocused, drama about the ills of debt and dishonesty. Certainly the highlight is Sarah Wakefield's performance, as Pearl Slade, the young woman who tries to rid herself of her parents' debts. She is a revelation. Sadly, her verve and imagination do little to salvage the tepid pantomime of the barfly, a character who perhaps could have done with a few lines after all. Levi Tolbert, Kentucky Post. Yeah, give us a couple lines. Barfly sits alone at a table with two glasses, one empty. Barfly straightens shirt, checks pocket for currency, empty-handed. Begins to calculate. Makes mental note of room's exits. <laughs> Considers possibility of escape. Inspects exit. Estimates paces to exit. Over there. Considers social effects of sudden exit. Weighs options. <laughs> Fumbles in pocket. Pretends to read. Encounters troubling headline. Bites lip. Pretends to, uh, something there. Recognizes neighbor. Pictured left. Averts eyes. Makes mental checklist for planned exit. Adjusts position. Prepares to bolt. Remembers half full drink. Pauses. Sighs. Relaxes shoulders. <laughs> He's not going anywhere with that full drink. I think we missed the Act 1 sound cues. Act 2 sound cues. Sound 5, Distant Highway. Sound 6, Nature Program. Sound 7, Drone Number 2. Sound 8, Door Opening. Sound 9, Door Closing. Sound 10, Car Passing By. Oh, Set Designer's Notes. Doolittle must have been an odd bird. Many playwrights of Tennessee Williams or Eugene O'Neill spend as much energy on precise descriptions of the play's set as they do on any of the dialogue. So my job is finding ways to be creative within constraint. But Doolittle only describes settings poetically. To be honest, I think he'd have preferred there wasn't a set at all. Well, here I am, building one anyway. Serves him right for disappearing all those years ago, the enigmatic, the enigmatic wino. I don't mind a drunk, but I hate riddles. Lula Chamberlain. And there she is, too. She's standing right over there. Is that Carrington? And is that the guy from the organ in the, um, uh, in Act 2? Act 2, Scene 1? Evelyn. Put it back on that weird dinosaur show, will ya? Harry. Nah, those history programs don't make any sense. I prefer the nature programs. They think they can just say anything on TV. I don't believe there to be a damn word in the Bible about dinosaurs on the ark. Been a long time since Sunday school for me. Do you go to church, though? No, nah, not since Bess. It was her church, really. Good Christian woman. Good Christian woman. Well, I'm curious to see where they're going with it. They've got you now. I just think they're going to run out of rope before long. Dinosaurs on the Ark. I prefer the nature programs. Yeah, so your vacation was good? Seven days poolside. I thought you said it was a beach. Oh, uh, short, sure, no, it, it was a pool. Was it a pool? Or a beach. Uh, maybe I don't remember. Weird. Oh, we do hear a door. Oh, who is that? Uh, you think I'm making this up? Oh, no. I... Hi, Harry. Are the old folks here? Just me and Evelyn. All morning. Hi, Evelyn. And, and that sot in the corner. You're early, Pearl. Your parents usually don't roll in until the evening, five or six. Everything all right? Oh, sure, thanks. We just have some stuff to talk about. Well, we'll post up here and let's watch this weird dinosaur show. I'll stand you a drink. All Harry's pouring today is hard times whiskey. That all you got? They make a good whiskey. Sure, but you know the rumors. Rumors are rumors. Put it on my tab, Harry. You driving, Pearl? Oh, God, no. 
you know they want almost 40 cents a gallon? Can't really whistle, sorry. <laughs> I had the early shift, so I just walked over. In this heat? You still working over there at uh, Ace Jewelry and Loan? Joe Harden proudly trading shortcuts for dignity six days a week since 1962. At least they ha at least they have the piety to shut down on Sunday. With Joe, it's more likely a hangover. Can't it be both? Well. I know you see more trade than I do. Must be slow over at the hardware store. Slow isn't the word. And now Ted is out shilling for quality hammers to, wait to make up income. Have you considered quality hammers on your shelf? We made the switch recently uh, and business has tripled. Well, of course, I'd love to have dinner with your lovely daughters. Evelyn. Hey, a man gets lonely out on the road. I know how it is. No. Harry, you've been traveling, right? Sure, yeah. D down in New Orleans, just uh, taking a break. A vacation? L looking around for ideas. Tell her about the pool or the beach. Evelyn. Sounds nice. And the hostess? I may just cut you off. Evelyn looks dejected. Harry clears his throat. So, the pool? O or the beach? Yeah, Harry. Which was it? Well, it was a week of relaxation and now I'm back. You still look stressed. If you don't mind me saying. <laughs> he just looks like that. Sure, that's just how I look. I've never known you to leave town, Harry. I've never known you to leave this bar. Oh, no, I, I get out. You still drive that old truck? I don't know. I think they towed it eventually. The hell you say? That must have been years ago, Harry. How do you get around now? I, uh... I take the bus, or I walk. You walk to New Orleans? Watch it, Evelyn. Evelyn looks dejected. I didn't mean nothing by it, Harry. Harry, did you really go to New Orleans? Now just where do you two get off? Sorry, forget it. Sure, she didn't mean nothing by it. We'll lay off you and get back to drinking. Gotta be ready for the entertainment. Oh, who's on tonight? Tonight, it's Junebug. Works for me. Round eight, I think. I'll stick around. I, I could use some sad music. I came here to break some hearts. What's that? To dash dreams. What are you talking about? Got to talk to my parents about their bar tab. I won't be paying for them anymore. Hang on now. No, I it's time to cut the old folks loose and head west. I can't keep enabling them, you know? A debt's a debt now. Harry... I'm sorry, I know you've got a vested interest, and I don't want to make a victim of you. They'll come up with it somehow. I'm sure. No, it's it's not that. The thing about debts is, you never know when they'll be reckoned and called in. What's that mean? I'm not saying anything, but I know debt, Harry. I see it all day. It's all around me like a thick gray fog. It's in the air I breathe. At the pawn shop, they have a new financial technology. I'm the ambassador. Did you know that? A new technology? It's a new kind of debt, Evelyn. And it's a mess. What do you mean, a new kind of debt? You know what we do at the pawn shop? Secured loans. We don't buy used goods. We take personal property as collateral on a loan. Then if you don't pay your loan, we sell your stuff. Sure, I get that. It works for people who couldn't get loans otherwise, I guess. Now, Harden has this new idea. He calls it a payday advance. But it's just a short-term, unsecured loan with a wicked interest rate. There's no filtering. Most who borrow can't keep up. Then he has this big pile of debts with big returns on paper, and he can sell those debts to a bank. Huh. 
Who's borrowing like that? Who do you think? When Joe put me in charge of it, the only dark-skinned clerk in the whole shop? You think so? I know it. Don't you see? I look just like you. You can trust me. But Joe knows they won't pay on time. There's no money in lending, but there's money in usury. That's in the Bible. I won't be his shill. I just have to save a bit more and then I go to California. I'll be a real clerk at a credit union or something. Something ethical. I just have to get rid of these old parasites first. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Well, my tab is in good shape, I think. You're behind, too. Not as bad as the Slades, but, well, Harry, the only thing I owe you is a handshake and this whiskey you're about to pour me. Let's say this one's on me, Pearl. No, I'm good for it. For today, let's just say it's on me. You're awfully strict about cash for a guy who just got back from a vacation. Drink up, Evelyn. Maybe you'd better find some other chair to sink into so your debts don't get reckoned out from under you. I'm out for a bit. I'll be back later to disappoint a couple of old deadbeats. I'll stay for the entertainment. I won't throw you out, but just remember what I said. Mm, love that exit sign. Shades of no exit, right? I love how they handle these scene transitions. It's beautiful. Stiffly written, but well acted. There aren't many characters in the entertainment, now playing at Buffalo Street Student Theater, but director James B. Carrington has been able to give them all enough dimension to make them interesting. Edgar Foy's performance as dejected bartender Harry is convincing, but this is not a role into which an actor can project much power. The audience pities him without ever really knowing why. Indeed, despite the cast's well-rounded portrayals, sparks only fly once or twice. Zoe Hook, Louisville, Louisville Times. Oh, Dramaturg's Notes. To set the play in present day in 1973, we needed to adjust the price of gas as discussed by Pearl, Evelyn, and Harry. We also made some adjustments to the description of Pearl's work. We left in a line about Rain's Law, which would have been archaic in Doolittle's time anyway. I guess the biggest change we made, besides mashing the two Doolittle plays into one, was to the title. I thought we should rename it A Reckoning and a Barfly, to mix the two titles and really be clear about where it came from, but Carrington liked the bleak irony of the entertainment. Joseph Wheatree. Act 3 Sound Cues, Sound 11, Distant Highway, Sound 12, Drone Number 3. Barfly slumps alone at table. Barfly remembers, scowls at memory of unkind world, remembers, considers retorts to perceived slights, remembers arguments, forgets specifics, scans forecast, tries to remember day of the week, considers past or future thunderstorm, scratches absently at table, silently repeats prayer to stupor. That'd be a hard role to play, I think to communicate all that without talking. Rosa, management material, that's what he said. Is that so? Uh, it's behind a supermarket, Till. You're damn right. Damn right. I have commitment and reliability. That's what he said, management material. I bet they raise you to three dollars. I bet four. The responsibility. It's just about as good as a whistle I can get. You see Pearl today? She was working all day, I think. Usually doesn't work mornings. The Slade women are all getting promoted. I think they just put her on another shift. What's the morning shift like at a pawn shop, do you think? Black coffee and desperation. Let's celebrate. Harry, another round. We're celebrating two promotions in the family. Talk to Pearl today. She worked all day. She was here earlier, looking for you two. She'll be back. Why don't you just pace yourselves until you talk to her? We're celebrating. 
pace yourselves or pay your bill. Why are you so stuck on a bill all of a sudden? Are you sunstruck? Sure, you know it's twice as bright when you get the ocean and the pool both reflecting at you. Evelyn? You catch sight of any alligators? Sure, it was gators everywhere. Uh, a swamp. Big sandy swamp with the pool and a hostess. What's that? Set him up, Harry. Junebug will be here any minute, and we want to be receptive. All right, but I keep track. There'll be a reckoning. You folks here about the reckoning? First I've heard. What's up, Harry? Short on your bills? Let the books get away from you? That's an ignorant thing to say. Been doing my books for ten years, keeping this place alive all on my own ever since Bess. I'd have just let you run that tab up until you drink yourselves underground. Now, he didn't mean nothing by it, Harry. Yeah, Harry. You know I'm only joking. Sure. I know. I know you're joking. All right. Let's drink. I better slow down. Hard times whiskey comes on strong. Don't want to end up like that boiled owl in the corner. I can't tell anymore. I hear they have some secret ingredients, or a secret process, or something. Something in the wood they age it in. Yeah, something strange in that wood. Drink up, Larry. Don't call me Larry. It sounds like an old man. All right, Silver Fox. Now you... I'll let it slide. Another? Well, I don't get paid until Friday, and I haven't seen Pearl all day. She can pick it up when she comes back. Don't count on it. What the hell kind of thing to say is that? Our own daughter. Generosities have limits. I don't know what she said, but the Slades are good for it. This family takes care of our own. Sure, we'll get it straightened out when she comes back. Better get here sooner, she'll miss the entertainment. Shouldn't Junebug be here by now, Harry? Yep. That's what you get working with artists. Good entertainment, but it's always late. This is pretty late, though. We'll stick around. We're celebrating. Sure. Yeah, not expecting a late-night call. Sentimental call. And if he does, let it ring. The philanderer. Last drink, Evelyn. One more, Harry. I just want to hear some music. Well, she better show up soon. I love that looming hard time served sign. Never goes dim, does it? Oh, this is pretty. Entertainment bores at times. The conclusion of the entertainment is obscure modernism posing as a tragedy. We can only presume that this is another of this company's experimental interventions into the original script, as it betrays the human drama so carefully erected over the prior three scenes. Lula Chamberlain's set is unpretentious and realistic with a handful of confident lighting cues. The dialogue has an easy facility for barroom banter, but a disconcerting habit of settling into familiar grooves. An uneven but decent production. Nathan Masters, Lexington Herald. Writer's Notes Many in the audience consider leaving. If anyone leaves, let them leave. The theater's not a prison. If anyone coughs, cough also. The theater's not a sickbed. We minister to the audience. We revere the pains of the audience. Lem Doolittle. I love that. Act 3, sound cues. Sound 13, distant highway. Sound 14, jukebox love song. Sound 15, disconcerting hum. Barfly slumps half asleep on table. Barfly struggles to remember mental checklist. Barfly drunkenly fumbles in pockets, remembers. Places right hand on chin. Places left hand on leg. Leans precariously into table. Closes eyes. Barfly opens eyes, scan table for landmarks, remembers, spits, 
glances at newspaper, tries to be interested. The barfly sighs, shuffles, surrenders. The gang's all here. Evelyn, drunk. I love this song. Pearl, sober. I've never heard it. It's a love song. It's a valentine. Sure. Ever been in love? Nope. Me neither. Well, there's Ted. Son of a bitch! Evelyn. You love Ted, right? He's a son of a bitch out on the road, selling hammers and hammering shop girls. You know he isn't. Well, I wish he would. You don't mean that. Sure. I, I, I don't mean that. He's a son of a bitch, but you have to stick by your family. Sometimes. If it kills you, do you? Why? You just have to. Why? I love this song. What if they're better off without us? My folks could get better with money. Ted could, I don't know, meet someone new? He wouldn't. He's a good man. Would you? Ugh. All I want is to be free of parasites, keep my own money, pay my own debts. Don't be a fool. Buy me a drink. What do you want? I want to run a hardware store with my dear husband, Evelyn. I want a whiskey. That's all you want? And a love song. I don't see Junebug anywhere. She could have said, sure. Pearl, you could have said something. I shouldn't have to say anything, Dad. Letting us just sit and soak up a debt? We're celebrating. Pearl, it's supposed to be a celebration. Don't you know the news? Larry, drop it. So celebrate. I'm not stopping you, but I'm not paying for it. Your mother's going to be a manager. So put a manager's salary on that tab. It's not... Sure, they said she's management material. What kind of material are you, Pearl? Maybe. He said... He said he... He said maybe. I'm made of sweat and blood and beer, just like you raised me. That's a damn strange thing to say. Sure, my hands are cut up, but... You're a loan clerk, and your mother is a manager at a supermarket. Damn it, Lawrence, it's not settled. Not settled? O'Neill just handed you a promotion. Why can't you celebrate? Rosa, what did he say to you? Remember what he said to you? He said... Didn't he? He said... Maybe eventually. Maybe... Eventually. Maybe, eventually, management material. C keep your chin up. Maybe, eventually. Sooner or later, keep your chin up? How's that, Dad? Enough. You can still settle. It'll just take longer. I should look again. Just sit with me, Larry. Let's just wait for the music. Get away from the awfulness. Sure. We can celebrate. Sure. The Slade women are moving up. Eventually. If she's this late... Where's Junebug? Where's the entertainment? I said, if she's this late. She always shows up. I've got nothing better to do. You gonna settle up first? Don't be a fool. Watch it. 
I'll buy you a drink. How about a water, Evelyn, and maybe call it a night? What time is it? I love this song. It's relaxing. Like the sun by the pool on the beach full of gators. God damn it, Evelyn. Harry, your language. What would Bess think? Good Christian woman. God damn it. Who cares if I did or didn't go to New Orleans? She didn't mean anything by it. Maybe I just sat here alone in the dark. Would you like that? Evelyn? That what you want to hear? Watching nature programs in the dark? Just me and the deer and the gators and the goddamn dinosaurs. It was Harry's Ark, Evelyn, two by two, out of the flood and into the poorhouse. She's... She's just drunk. All on my dime. Well, there's gonna be a reckoning. All of you. Just stick around. You'll see. What are you talking about, Harry? What reckoning? I want to hear another love song. Where's Junebug? I hope she never shows up. I can't pay her. The money's run out. What's that? It's gone. The money is all gone. I let you sponges soak up so many free drinks now I can't even stock the whiskey without striking a deal. No more whiskey? Harry, what kind of deal? Doesn't matter. You can't blame us. Harry, we're just a little short from time to time. Sure. Just leave Pearl. Just trust me. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm leaving. Are you sure? I'm sure. You don't deserve this. All I want is a love song. And a whiskey. You'll have plenty of time for whiskey. I just want... I just want to be left alone. That man is like a straitjacket. I know, Evelyn. If only he meets some tall young thing on the road. I know. Eleven years behind a supermarket till. Keep your chin up, Rosa. Eventually, maybe. Maybe, eventually. Now. I... You all should clear out. Where would we go? Just let us wait. Let us wait for Junebug. We're good for it. We just want to have a few drinks. See the entertainment. Then we'll go home. You don't understand. Sure. We know you're struggling. We're all struggling. Harry, you said you have a deal, right? God damn. Damn it, you don't understand me? Harry, your language. What's to understand? We'll settle our debt soon. Rose is in line for this promotion. All they want is debt. They feed on it. They put it in the whiskey. Whoa. What? What? What the hell are you saying? He'll be here soon. The boy from hard times. There'll be a reckoning. Ha Harry, our debt's not to the distillery. It is now. I traded it. I sold it. I'm sorry. I'm... I'm so sorry. What? What is that? What is that noise? Oh my god! What the heck is. Who is that? Mmm. And that was Lem Doolittle's The Entertainment. That's that, friends. That's. <laughs> 
that's that. I think we have a lot to think about as we go into Act 3 of Kentucky Route Zero. Well, I can't wait to show you guys what's in store with Act 3, probably, you know, in my opinion. I, I haven't played Act 4 or Act 5, but in my opinion, Act 3 is one of the most uh, really <laughs> goosebump-inducing resonant acts, and I'm starting to put things together a little bit more than I did my first go-round, so whew, we have a lot to think about, friends. All right. Thanks for watching Kip Plays the Entertainment. I have been and I will continue to be Kip Icon as long as you guys continue to what? Follow your drams. Bye.